All right, everyone, it is day three of grape harvest. I think tonight is gonna be pretty quick. I have a feeling we'll probably only do four or five loads, and the last two nights we were doing 14. Um, we also had two harvesters the last two nights, and tonight we're only gonna have one harvester, but I still think it'll be pretty quick. So here goes day three of grape harvest. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Tara, a farmer from Northern California. This channel is mainly about farming, but sometimes it's not. So I'm just driving around really quick. I want to go attempt to drive my drone, but it is pretty windy. So I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to get any drone footage, which is a little sad, but that's okay. I've got many more years to come of this, but I am starting to get my reports back from Gallo on how all the grapes are looking and everything is so beautiful. I'm really happy with how things are turning out. And there's a few things that we want to look at. We want to look at the sugars. Gallo's really happy with the sugar that we're getting. And we want to look at, there's a couple other things. There's something called MOG. It's material other than grapes. And it's basically what the harvester gets off the vines that it doesn't flush through and it gets dumped into the trucks and it hasn't been too bad so that means that the harvesters are doing a good job getting all that stuff out and just pulling the grapes out so the mog numbers have been good and then the other number is rot and i was concerned about that being my first year but the rot has been basically zero zero percent rot so that means all the clusters are in really good shape right now and everything is just really really good i'm i'm blown away i i think the yield at the end of the day is going to be higher than i was expecting and things are just looking beautiful so we're going to drive around i'm going to check a few things out we're going to see if i can fly the drone and i think we're going to start harvesting in about 30 minutes or so that's what i think 30 minutes to an hour so we'll we'll check out the rows for now all right this is it guys this is the last few rows we've got 30 rows left just wanted to come and say goodbye to the grapes even though that probably sounds silly it's like oh this is it the first harvest is almost over already which i knew it was going to go by fast and here it is lasting one extra day so that's cool um I honestly, I feel like I probably addressed this in one of the other videos, but I'm just gonna address it again um, because this has been the number one question I get asked since I've been sharing um, a lot of these pictures and videos on Instagram is why do we harvest at nighttime? So the reason we harvest at nighttime is mainly because of temperature. It gets pretty hot here during the day. So there are other areas that will harvest during the daytime because they have cooler temperatures but it's better for the grapes because we don't want them to start fermenting in the heat so that's why we harvest at night it's easier on the vines and also for the crew and the machine the machine runs hot so it's better for it to be running at cooler temperatures and it's better for the crews to be working in cooler temperatures versus the heat so those are a few reasons of why we harvest at nighttime aren't they beautiful we did it Two and a half years on these babies. They're ready to go. So if you didn't know, all my grapes go to Gallo. I'm told they should go into Dark Horse Sauvignon Blanc. So that's kind of what I tell people when they ask where they can buy my wine, because I don't make wine. I tell them, get Dark Horse Sauvignon Blanc. 2020 when it comes out. Oh, I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm exhausted. I, I can't imagine the people that have to do this, you know, for weeks, but I am, I'm so happy. We did it.
So I recently got asked how many people are on a harvester. So we've got one driver, there's someone on the top pulling out leaves, and then if you see this lady in the back here, there's also someone on the other side. So there are four people per harvester, and each harvester has two tractors and two gondolas. So four people on the harvester, and all together there will be six people per harvester. So while we're waiting on tractors and gondolas, I thought I'd answer a couple of questions that I know I get from you guys. One is how do we measure the grapes? So like a lot of people have been asking if we measure like by bushel, which is what corn does. So we measure tons per acre. So tons, that's how we measure the grapes weight and I get paid per ton. That's how my contract works. Another question I've been getting asked a lot is how are grape prices? And one thing for me is because I have a contract, I have a flat rate during my contract where like I know the corn price changes every day and you can sell a little bit now, you can save some for later. Um, I don't deal with that. My dad does all that for the corn, so I don't completely understand it, but I, I kind of get the gist of it. Um, so it is not that way with my grapes. I have a flat rate, I know what I'm gonna get paid per ton, and we just gotta see what I get for the harvest. So hopefully that clears up a couple questions for you guys. I've also been getting asked what are the next steps for the vineyard. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna irrigate. We wanna give these guys back some water. We'll be doing some fertilizer and nutrients. Um, I gotta talk with Charlie, my PCA, about a plan. He'll know what I need to do and I'm still learning, but I definitely know the next thing is gonna be to give these guys basically a spa day so they can prepare to go into dormancy for the winter. And then after that, we'll be starting the whole year over basically. The 2021 season will be starting and we'll be pruning and hopefully I kept good enough notes during 2020 that I'll, I'll have a better understanding of what I need to do this year because this was a big learning year for me. So this truck is half full. We've got this one and the next one over. Everything is looking really good. We've got some bigger gondolas today, so we'll just be doing four gondolas per truck and probably three to four trucks tonight. That's what I'm feeling right now. It's already dark out. Okay, we did it. It's, we, we just finished. We did uh, four and a half truckloads tonight. We're all done. It is 3.45 a.m. I'm gonna go home, sleep, and we'll come back by the farm tomorrow and see how things are looking. I can't believe it's done. My first harvest, guys. We did it. Back out in the vineyard, it is about 3.30 p.m. and we finished harvesting around 4 a.m. this morning. It is finished, guys. It's complete. All the grapes are at Gallo and uh, it's done. It's so crazy.
So I just wanted to talk about a few more things before ending today's video. So I also had some people ask about what we do with the rachises, which are these guys, what's left behind after the grapes. So basically all this stuff is gonna be left and then when the vines go dormant this winter, this will all get pruned it'll get put on the ground and it'll get dissed back in. So all this stuff just goes right back into the earth. I'm still just so blown away by what this vineyard did this year. Being my first harvest, the yield was definitely more than I was expecting and I feel extremely blessed. I just got this shirt last week from Meredith, this farm wife, which I know a lot of you guys watch her. It says, teamwork makes the dream work. And this is really how I'm feeling right now because in my very first video, I, I said how I'm so thankful for so many people and I am, but there has been so many people that have been hands on helping me out here. There's a local farmer that's been out here helping me, Manor Ranch, they, it's a son and a dad and they have just been so helpful. I, I can't even explain how helpful they have been for me. My PCA Charlie, which he's from Presley Vineyards, you know, these hands-on people that I literally know nothing about vineyards. I knew nothing about coming into it and I would not be here today without those people's help. Um, I call them constantly with questions and they're the ones that tell me what to do next. So I'm extremely thankful. This was really a team effort and uh, I'm blown away. I really am blown away. I'm blown away by this crop and I'm just, I'm so thankful. And I'm thankful for Gallo for giving me, giving, giving me the chance to do this, taking a chance on a new grower. And uh, I'm excited to see where the future with Gallo goes. You know, I have a 10 year contract with them and I just hope to build a beautiful relationship with them and hopefully it will continue even after that 10 years. Okay, so this is it. Now the 2021 season will start. I hope you guys are enjoying my videos. And now that this is finished, we will get back to alfalfa and corn. I know a lot of you guys started here because of that. Corn harvest is about, let's see, maybe a month away or so. So no vacation yet, but I'm, I'm on cloud nine, guys. I really am. I hope you guys like this video, subscribe, share. It means so much to me and I will catch you guys next time.